Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of that podcast. My name is Ryan Janke, and as always, I'm joined by Pastor DJ Laura, Dana Mashevsky, and Sarah DeYoung. So, uh, Pastor DJ, yes, you had something that you wanted to bring up. Yeah, I just feel like a like a cranky old man, a curmudgeon. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if if you guys have ever had this question, but so I, I don't know where even this idea came from. Apparently, it's age old. There is within the zeitgeist of our culture this assumption that Easter, uh, while for Christians, it's the resurrection of our Lord. As Christianity spread across the ancient world, mm-hmm. it hijacked pagan festivals and just named them things like, you know, there's there was this pagan festival for the goddess Eastry uh-huh. in England, and Christians came on and said, nope, we're calling the resurrection oh, of Jesus sure. Easter. I see what you're saying. Uh, it's interesting that you used the word zeitgeist because I think there is a documentary called Zeitgeist that goes along that uh, narrative. Really? Yeah. I, I just stole it because it's a good German oh. word that talks about you know the spirit We're of fact the age. Check you on that. Yeah, go ahead. Well, my, remember my, what happened last time you fact checked me? Yeah, you were right, and I'm so annoyed <laughs> about it. Okay, so here's here's my bone to pick, and I'm going to pick it clean. I am hugely disappointed with the news sources that I would go to thinking that they would be credible Uh about the actual history of something like Easter or Christmas. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I went to time magazine. Mm -hmm. I went to national geographic. I went to the history channel. I went to USA today. I went to the BBC. I went to, um, the Guardian, I don't even know if that that's like a, a mm-hmm. British newspaper. Yep. All of them pushed forward this farce, and it is a farce, of this this supposed goddess from Anglo Saxon pre Christianity named Eastry and the German goddess named Ostara as if they're actual things. And you know what, folks? Let you know a little secret. Mm-hmm. There is no none zip zilch any archaeological evidence or writing dating back to these supposed pagan goddesses and some supposed festival in the springtime Mm -hmm. that Christians hijacked and called Easter. Okay. And there's a whole myth that has been um, perpetuated concerning Christian uh, celebrations as if Christianity took over these things from other places. But the fact of the matter is Christmas was celebrated as Christmas on December 25th before Saturnalia was even a big deal. And there was no one named Eastry and there was no springtime festival in Europe at the time of the resurrection. The resurrection of Christ has been celebrated since 30 AD. Yep. Mm -hmm. Between March and April, But the reasoning for it, the reason for the misunderstanding is incredibly interesting. And the reason I bring this up is because we received a message from a good buddy of ours. And I just want to read the message. Um, Not Redbeard? Not Redbeard. No, a a good buddy. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Wow. That was a smooth stone and a slingshot. Where's the, I need, I need something like here. Hold on. (laughs) <laughs> Boom! <laughs> I'm just kidding, Redbeard. We love you. So I got I got this uh, message from Derek W. And he's he's good about all kinds of stuff. And he asked me this question. I, I'm going to just summarize it. He said, um, "What are my thoughts on Santa Claus, Christmas time, mm-hmm. or the Easter Bunny? And do you feel like they distract kids?" from celebrating Christ and instead putting a focus on a fairy tale idol. Um, so that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about, about Easter and all the different symbols that we have. Cause there's a bunch of weird stuff like, mm-hmm. and, and so without getting into the whole story, I'm just going to ask all of you guys names, name one like Easter tradition that, that is that you can point to in our culture. You're like, yeah, people do that at Easter time aside from drinking, Soda flavored peeps. Peeps, Pepsi. 
Yeah. How about dying Easter eggs? Yeah. So Easter. dying Easter eggs has an old, old, old tradition that actually does go into pagan cultures. It goes back to the idea of, of what happens in springtime. What usually happens with eggs at springtime? Unless you're a chicken on a domesticated farm, what usually happens? They get dyed. They hatch. They hatch. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> they hopefully hatch. Yes. Eggs have always been a symbol of birth and springtime because, lo and behold, throughout nature, throughout history, eggs usually hatch in the springtime. Okay. And then you get new animals, right? Mm -hmm. So early on in Christianity, it became the practice that the symbol of new life was an egg. Okay. And as Christendom developed, um, there was a fast that took place during the season of Lent. And they didn't have refrigeration, right? So eggs didn't last for 40 days without going bad. So you know what they did with the eggs? Ate them? No. Oh. Because they weren't allowed to eat them. You had to abstain from eating eggs. Okay. They would hard boil them. And then after 40 days, when the fast was broken, you'd have eggs. Okay. You'd eat the eggs. And so, so to make it more celebratory, in the Greek Orthodox tradition, they began painting them first red. Okay. Because of the, the color of the blood of Christ. Okay. And then once Easter came around, you would, you know, and that's where the games would, would develop. You'd hide an egg and kids would celebrate because you want to mm -hmm. get the kids plugged in mm -hmm. and, and to experience these things. That's where these traditions come in. Um, but none of it is like stolen from, from somebody. Okay. Um, as if, as if, you know, Christianity didn't have its own roots in these things. Right. So, so eggs, what else you got? Going off that deviled eggs. <laughs> I don't think that's an Easter thing so much. Oh, I've really, heard of that. They only come around at Easter. Yeah, I think that's- No, more. they don't. <laughs> Wait, what? We only have them at Easter time in my family. This, oh, never mind. my this mom just makes weird them whatever thing. she oh, has to uh, okay. bring a dish somewhere. <laughs> uh, well, and, and that is a thing. I mean, people do eat deviled eggs on Easter, just like people will eat ham on Easter. Mm -hmm. And again, both of those have to do with breaking the fast of Lent. Can can I go uh, down the ditch for a second and tell no. you, tell you uh, something that irritates my wife tremendously? A lot of things, I'm guessing. <laughs> you? Well, yeah, that too, but... Uh, I always say, and it irritates her to no end, that uh, cranberries are only available at Thanksgiving time. <laughs> Canberries are, yeah. You Why would she be annoyed by that? I mean, that's just common sense, yeah. isn't it? It's when they're yeah. in season. Yeah. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, that bothers her a lot. You can't. I, it, like, I'll, that's she'll, funny. She'll be going to the grocery store shortly before Thanksgiving, and I'll say, she'll say, do, you, do we need anything? Get like seven cans of cranberries. Why? Because oh. we're not going to be able to get them until next Thanksgiving. <laughs> all right, I apologize. As so, you were. So uh, le let me explain to you all the history of Easter, kids. Get you all tucked what about in. about a chocolate bunny? Yeah, so that's American, and that has to do with uh, the chocolate companies in the 20th <laughs> century. How about watching The Passion of the Christ? I just watched that the other day. We watched the Star Wars series on Easter this year. Actually, you know when I watched it? <laughs> I, I, watched, and better choice. I watched the Passion of the Christ after I left here on Sunday morning after the sunrise service and before I came back to get Haley. I was going to say, you she, guys were oh. here at the early morning and then what, you just left a child? Well, yeah, because she was signed up to volunteer. Yeah. So I went home and watched the Passion of the Christ. Mm -hmm. How and was then that? I came back. It was good just like it is every year. I've watched that movie once. It gets harder and harder and to watch every time you watch it. Um, it was hard enough the first time. I've, I've watched it one time in the theater. It's burned into my brain. Yeah. I can't watch it again. I was going to say that I've seen it 20 it times, but that's not true because I watch it like once a year around Easter time and it's only been around for like 20, 20 I, years. I, I still like, you know, not, not to gross anyone out, but um, like my whole body tightens up. Yeah. Whenever I think of that movie, because I picture two things, his scourging. Yeah. And then when they have them on the cross and they flip them over. Oh yeah, yeah, <sighs> yeah. It it actually I like I. Uh huh. That's right, Dana. I, That's I, the face to make. <laughs> you do that for forty five minutes watching that movie. I would be. I would be. I can say confidently, I've seen it fifteen times. 
Really? Why? And it, it gets harder to watch every that time. That didn't sell me on that. Yeah. <sighs> it gets harder to watch every time I watch it. Yeah. Mm. I, I would I would guess that. Like like you would think, well, it would get easier because you've seen... Yourself? You would think it would get easier because, you you know, mm. I've seen it 14 times. This 15th time should be all right. <laughs> no, it gets harder yeah. to watch every that, time you that, watch that it. That sounds like a Lenten discipline by itself. Like, mm. I, I've... I know what happens. I've read the book, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but just seeing it once was was plenty for me. <laughs> yeah. I just imagine the book's always better than the movie. <laughs> Ryan's like, I'm in and out two hours. Who yeah. needs the book? Yeah. I can yeah. the cliff notes. Two, two, yeah. two twelve. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so here's the real story about Easter. And like I said, here's my my big frustration is like, I wanted to summarize this after I got the question. Because it, it is, an, it is a, a valid question that, that is asked by Derek. Is it easy to get bogged down by Santa Claus or by the Easter Bunny? Mm -hmm. And my response is, if you don't have a grounding in Christ, because both, both Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny are about getting children included in something fun. Mm -hmm. But it has to have a grounding. For example, Santa Claus literally means Saint Claus. And Klaus is short for Nicholas, St. Nicholas. So his name isn't Santa. The title is Saint. Mm -hmm. And that was an actual person. Mm -hmm. Every and movie I've ever known has called him Santa. I know. And they get it wrong. <laughs> See what I mean? That's what I mean about, about the sources that we go to that we mm -hmm. think we can rely on get it wrong. Um, like Rise of the Guardians gets Santa Claus completely wrong. Yeah, Actually, that's probably one of the good Santa Claus. But you know what? It gets the Easter Bunny right. Because it uses yeah, yeah, well, the Easter Bunny in that movie is a hare. It's not a it's not a bunny. We have bunnies in the he United States. He turns into a bunny at one point, doesn't he? Once he well, starts losing his magic, he turns into a bunny. Well, I don't. Okay, fine. But I will. <laughs> I, he, he's a hare. He's a rabbit, just like the the jack rabbits that we have around here that look like you know mini yeah kangaroos. Mm -hmm. Yep. They yeah, do. there's one that lives outside my window. Every yeah. time I see one of those, I'm like, ah, Easter Bunny. But the Easter nice. Bunny, the idea of the Easter hare. Come, goes back to Germany, and here's the thing: the things that goof people up are really they're, they're Lutheran traditions <laughs> that move away from the veneration of saints and teach folklore to kids to connect them with the fun that comes with the underlying message of Christianity at both Christmas time and Easter time. The Easter Bunny comes from German immigrants from the 17th century. That's as old as it is. Okay, it's not some ancient. The goddess Ostre and her, her pet hair that she carried around. No, that's that's make believe. None of that is real. Okay, there's no history of it, like anywhere. the The Anglo Saxons before Christianity they worshipped Thor and Odin and the rest of the Marvel pantheon. Okay, <laughs> okay. Spider Man. <laughs> Please, no the Hulk. Hulk. We're the Church of Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was no. There was no Eastery or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and I can I can show you and I'll share with you where these things came from. It was it's they're almost like a reemergence after Christianity of this rejection of Christianity for, you know, the 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 innocent pagans that were just minding their own business and then Christians came in and ruined all their fun. Mm -hmm. The the hare, the Easter bunny, it, it came from the idea that in the spring, what do you see a lot of? Bunnies. Bunnies. And they hop around in April and a little bit of May, and then you don't see them anymore. Come June, you don't see them. You want to know why? Because they're grown-ups now. They're what? rabbits. Well, they're, they're full grown. Because they've, they've <laughs> figured out to burrow and to hide from predators. I was going to say, if, you, if it was the ones living by my house, they're just tormenting my dog. <laughs> and, and pooping. Yes. Yeah. But in April... They come out of they come out of hibernation and they're just all over the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that would that was a symbol of springtime as well. And so the Easter bunny is parents saying to their kids, Oh, look at the look at the Easter house as it would hop around outside. Mm -hmm. Um and the German immigrants, like like the Amish and Lutherans that came over at in the seventeen hundreds brought that tradition with them. Just like they brought the tradition of the Christmas tree. Because the Christmas tree comes from Lutherans. Um, it's not a pagan thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's actually tied back to the, the tradition says it goes back to Martin Luther himself. Like there's a whole story about Martin Luther bringing a tree into his house and putting lights on it because he thought it looked so beautiful, like the like mm -hmm. the heavenly angels singing praises to God. 
But these are these are folklore traditions that are not meant meant to be like some ritualistic worship of some pagan deity of some kind. Uh, but the story of Easter and the idea that it doesn't come from Christ, because other languages other than English and German, right? Like like the Lat- Latin languages, which is not German and it's not English. Those are those are both come from the same root. Um, they use the word Pasha because Easter means Passover. The, the Passover that we celebrate of Christ's resurrection is you could call it the Christian Passover because Jesus takes the main piece, the Passover meal, and 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 gives us the New Testament, the New Covenant, through the institution of the Lord's Supper within that meal. The meal of Passover was about the deliverance of God's people out of bondage. Well, that's what the New Testament is too, but we discover that God's people are is everybody and that Christ is the one. Not only is he the lamb whose blood uh, keeps passes over the 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 angel of death, um, but he's he is the one that is the is God Himself culminating in God delivering His people out of the bondage to to sin, death, and the devil? Right. Well, that word is Pasha, and so in French, when talking about Easter, they call it Pasha. When in in the Greeks, they call it Pasha, and so on. Then they get to the Germans, and just like if you've ever seen that video on YouTube of the German words compared to every yes. other word, it's I just love a nightmare. <laughs> and then it's all the other countries going, "No, please don't." Right, right. <laughs> you know, ambulance. Yeah, Frankenwagen. Yeah, <laughs> I love that one so much. So, so they get the word. They they use the word Easter, and the mm-hmm. Easter is nothing more than it. It can mean East, and it can mean Dawn, in English, in Old English, in Anglo-Saxon, and in Old Germanic. The reason why it's thought that it was named after some god or goddess is because of a guy named uh, the Venerable Bede, and in his writing, he's he's a, a monk, and he lived in the seven hundreds. And there had been Christian worship and the celebration of Easter on the British Isles since like 400 AD, okay? Well, the Venerable Bede is like, yeah, we call it Easter, and I think it's because there was some goddess that was, you know, called Easter and, and had a celebration at this time. So it just kind of coincided. So the people around here call it Easter. That would be like saying that because we celebrate Good Friday, that we are calling the Norse goddess Freya good. Like it's that kind of logic. So BD says this and people nowadays run with it as if, yeah, Easter is taken over a pagan religion and is taken away. You, you, I dare you look at any source that you think you can rely on, um, national geographic, and it will push forward this falsity that's easily provable to be false. Cause there is no record anywhere of this, idea of this goddess named Easter from the Anglo-Saxon um, pantheon pre-Christian. Okay. So you fast, you fast forward ahead. No one thinks two things about the little line that Venerable BD says. That's not even factual. It's conjecture. He's just like, oh, I think that's why they call it Easter. You go forward to a guy named Jacob Grimm. You guys know Jacob Grimm, right? He was one of the three brothers. Yeah, yeah he worked for Disney for a bunch of years. <laughs> Isn't his mother a goose? Yeah, I think it's his <laughs> mother goose. <laughs> What's well, so funny? Well, all of Grimm's fairy tales are Disney movies, right? <laughs> so Grimm, uh, Jacob Grimm and his brother wrote down Grimm's fairy tales in uh, 1830s, right? So I don't know why you questioned me. <laughs> because I'm annoyed that things come out of your mouth sounding <laughs> wrong, but they're not always wrong. So Jacob Grimm writes uh, another point of conjecture, wondering about the word Easter. And there he, he mentions that uh, the Venerable Beatty talked about this thing. And it's uh, it, most likely the word Easter it, in German, it's Ostara. So there was obviously a, a German goddess pre-Christianity worship that was called Ostara. And then people have run with it and said, well, that just means Ishtar and that means blah, blah, blah. And there's no credible documentation of any of these things. There's no archeological evidence of any of these things. And yet we get to the 19th century and there's like an article or two in like good housekeeping talking about the origins of Easter. And someone finds this and points to it. And that's what's made it into a thing. 
And in the 21st century, people keep repeating this mishmash, this gobbledygook, and none of it's true. There's, there, there's no proof of any type of goddess that was worshipped in the British Isles that Christians came along and said, oh, they, they have a celebration for springtime and Easter. That's, that's when we celebrate the Pasha. We're just going to just amalgamate it and take it over. And that's what offends me because sources like the National Geographic, sources like NBC News, sources like, uh, you know, I mean, the History Channel. You would think they would do a little bit of research that I covered in, in 15 minutes on the interweb webs of all things yep. to find credible sources to be like, there's nothing to this. It just, it, it, it hurts my heart. I'm disappointed. I'm sure they don't care about my little opinion, <laughs> but I'm just like, you know, you, you, you look at these mm-hmm. sources as a kid and you think I can rely on yeah. these credible sources. And, and it just brings into doubt for me. Like if you can't get this straight, what else is, are you not getting right? <laughs> I always find it kind of ironic. Like this, all, I feel like always comes up around Christmas and like, oh, the Christmas tree was stolen and all this stuff. We yeah. have like Christianity has such a long history that I kind of, I just find it ironic that somebody thought at one point that, you know, their pagan neighbors invited this Christian over to their house. <laughs> was like, I really like that. Right. I'm going to start doing that at my house. And right. then it just like replaced all they had done for all this time leading up in it disseminate to what it, it is now. Like. It makes no sense, but you have this coming up and it could, it could be because people like me will click on it because I'm like, how dare they? <laughs> right. Hate clicks. Like it's just, a, it's just click. Any bait. click is a good mm-hmm. click. But you know what? It, and, and here's what really, this really broke my heart. And this is going to sound silly to you guys, but my wife for years has loved uh, getting the magazine real simple. You ever heard of real simple? No. Okay, mm-hmm. then you, uh, you're you a man and you two are under the age of 30. So I was like, <laughs> I don't know that one. It's, 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 it's like a, a how to make your house look all pretty and stuff like that. And I clicked on an article from Real Simple talking about Easter and what do they pour forth? What do they vomit out of their website to offend my sensibilities? The whole myth of the goddess Easter or Easter or E O S T R E and how this is what Christianity was originally all about. And I'm just like, oh. did you throw it away? Oh, I'm never buying real simple again. <laughs> I'm boycotting <laughs> <laughs> planting his flag in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's, that's my kvetch. I'm, I apologize to anyone, but the, the point originally to Derek is that if you get wrapped up in the secular things, mm-hmm and you take Christ out of Christmas or Christ out of Easter, that's where the folklore can become a problem. If it's a fun little tradition amongst your family where you can spend time with them and have a good time, mm-hmm. then there's nothing wrong with it. Just like, just same with Halloween. I mean, there's bad stuff that can happen with Halloween, but if you understand the the source of it and you enjoy the fun part mm-hmm. without all the gross stuff that people put into it, yep. or at Christmas or at Easter, then, then you got things set out just right. Okay. The Easter bunny can point to Jesus. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't have fingers. I mean, I just well. saw a really cool tradition on TikTok of somebody who makes a rope, like a little string maze to their kids' Easter baskets instead of having to hide eggs. I'm like, that's genius. Yeah. Huh. And they have a whole little story about how, you know, the Easter bunny, his sweater got stuck on the doorknob and <laughs> it pulled all the way to where he put your baskets. Oh, and then thread. he like, that's so smart. That's that clever. smart. That's mm-hmm. fun. That's, That's fun. good times. Mm-hmm. So find your Easter basket and let's get our church clothes on because mm-hmm. we're going to church. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got that settled. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. We ready to yeah. pull the pin on this deal? Yeah. You want, you want to pray, Sarah? Sure. All right. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this day and for this season of Easter. And Lord, we thank you for the Easter bunny and Peeps Pepsi and... Reese's eggs and all the things, but especially you that help us celebrate this season. And Lord, I just pray that we don't get bogged down in all of the hubbub and folklore and all of that, and that we can continue just to point to you and be led to you. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. If you're listening, then you're there. (laughs) It is the only way to (laughs) digest this podcast is by listening. Yes. Hey, share this with a friend. Tell them, you know what? I'm sorry, Ryan. wherever you are that's where you are <laughs> <laughs> all right hey let somebody know about this podcast that we call that podcast say hey i got a great podcast that's called that podcast you should listen to it 
Share it around. Let them know that you can find it anywhere you buy your podcast. And this one is free. Dana, it's not this podcast. It's that podcast. That podcast. It is. It is. Also, if you are looking for a place to worship this weekend, you can come right into 4601 South University Drive, Fargo, North Dakota, and worship in person. Or you can go online to atonementfargo.org, atonement.live, or on YouTube and watch services at 9 and 1030 a.m. every Sunday. So, for Pastor DJ Laura, Dana Mashevsky, and Sarah DeYoung, I'm Ryan Janke. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on another riveting episode of that podcast. I didn't forget how to do riveting. That's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> They're still listening. <laughs> <laughs>